Today we're going to be learning about expressing information algebraically. This is useful when you are wanting to solve a word problem that you've been given and now that you know how to solve equations we can use those to help us to solve word problems but it's important for us to know how to express information algebraically so that we can set up the equation that will help us to actually solve that, that word problem. So what we're going to be doing today is just getting used to writing things, expressing values algebraically or in terms of x, which we would then be using to help us to set up those equations. Okay, so first of all, we're going to look at some terminology that you should know. So over here, I've got three terms. We've got consecutive. If you see the word consecutive, it means following each other. So you can talk about consecutive numbers. That could be numbers like three, four, five are consecutive or you could have consecutive odd numbers, which would be numbers like 3, 5, 7, or consecutive even numbers, even numbers, which would be numbers like 2, 4, and 6. Okay, so consecutive just means following each other. Then we've got sum, which is the result of addition, and difference, which is the result of subtraction. We do also have two other terms that we have talked about in the past. Those were product and quotient, but we're not really going to be using them at the moment. So these are the ones we're going to be focusing on mainly. Okay, so now let's go and have a look at some examples where we're going to be practicing expressing things algebraically. Over here, we have got four examples that I'm going to do with you, and then I'll give you some more that we're going to be, that I'm going to give you time to try and do, and then I'll go through them with you. So for these three, the first example is three consecutive numbers. Now let's just quickly have a look at this. If I were to give you the numbers 3, 4, and 5. Now these are consecutive numbers because they follow on from each other. These numbers I could have written if I made x my first number, 3. Whenever we're doing this, we're wanting to write our things in terms of x. So one of them is going to be x. So in this case, I'm making the smallest one x. How do we get from 3 to 4? We add 1. So this will be x plus 1. Whatever x is, so if x was 10, my numbers would be 10, 11. And then how do I get from x to that? I plus 2, x plus 2. So this is one way of writing these values in terms of x. I can make them x. then x plus 1 and x plus 2. Now there is another way of doing it and that is like this. What if I wanted to make the middle number x? I could do that. Then how would I get from 4 to 3? I would have to subtract 1. So I would say x minus 1. And how would I get from 4 to 5? I would add 1, x plus 1. Now this over here is actually sometimes a better way to do it when we are solving a word problem. And I'll show you when we do word problems in the next lesson what I mean by that. Okay, so there, that is another way of doing it. You could also make the last number x, in which case you'd have x minus 2 and x minus 1 and x. But I'm not going to put that option up here. But it is something you could do as well. So over here, I have got x minus 1, then I've got x, and x plus 1. Okay, so those are two different ways of representing these numbers in terms of x, three consecutive numbers. The next one that we're going to do is there are 32 people, girls and boys, in the class, and we want to know how many girls there are and how many boys there are. Now, we're going to make, as I said, you're always going to make one of the things x. So we can, in this case, make either one x. But it would depend in the situation where you have a word problem, which one you're being asked to work out. If you're being asked to work out how many girls there are, I recommend making the number of girls x. If you're being asked to work out how many boys there are, I recommend making the number of boys x. Okay, so you will decide based on whatever you're asked to do. So if I make the number of girls x, then what will the number of boys be? If I know the total number of people in the class is 32, then if I know how many girls there are, I can take the number of girls away from the total to find out how many boys there are. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take the total number of people in the class, which is 32. We're going to subtract the number of girls, which we have called x. So when we write the number of boys in terms of x, we're going to write it as 32, which is the total, 
minus x. Any time that you have something like this, where you've got a total number, and you have to write two parts of that in terms of x, make one of them x, and the other one will be the total minus x. Okay, now, as I said, we could have done it the other way around. We could have said, if I am asked to work out how many boys there are, then I would have made the number of boys x. So then I would make the number of girls the total minus x. So over here, when you have a total and then two different groups making up that total, it doesn't matter which way around you do it. It will work out the same either way. If you make the number of girls x, then the boys will be 32 minus x. If you make the number of boys x, the girls will be 32 minus x. Those are identical to each other. It's just the other way around. Okay, this one over here, we have got a girl is three years older than her sister. Now, again, there are two ways of doing this. If you are asked to work out the girl's age, then you make the girl's age x. Okay, now we have to think, if she is three years older than her sister, what do you have to do to her age to find out how old her sister is? You have to go backwards because her sister is younger. Okay, so if she's older, it means her sister is younger. So we have to go backwards. So we're going to go her si the girl's age and we're going to subtract the number of years that the girl is older by. She's older by three years, which means the sister is younger by three years. So we can say the girl is x and the sister is x minus three. However, if we were asked to work out how old the sister is, then we make the sister a x, and then we're going to write the girl's age in terms of x. So then we would have x plus three, because the girl is older by three years. So we have to add three to the sister's age to get the girl's age. So it depends on which way around you are being asked, which one you're being asked to work out. If you're being asked to work out the girl's age, you make the girl's age x, and you make the sister in terms of x. If you're being asked to work out the sister's age, you make the sister x, and then you make the girl's age in terms of x. Okay. And then obviously one is negative and one is positive because one is older and one is younger. Right, the next one, we've got the sum of two numbers is 50. Now, this one is very similar to what we had in this one. The sum is what we get when we add numbers. So, the sum is the total. Remember, I said anytime you have something where you've got a total and then two things making up that total, one of them is going to be x and the other one is going to be the total minus x. So if I make number 1 x, the other number will be 50 minus x. However, if I choose to make number 2 x, then number 1 will be the total minus x. So remember, anytime you have a total and two things making up that total, then one of them will be x and the other one will be the total minus x. Okay, so now I'm going to give you some that you're going to do for yourself. So here you've got three that you're going to work on. I'm going to give you one minute to express all of these in terms of x. Okay, so in this example, you only had to do one version for each one, but I will do both options for each one so you can see if the one you've done is correct. Okay, so the first one we've got, there are 72 people, men and women, at the bank. So again, this is one where we've got a total, which is made up of two groups. We've got men and women. So I'm going to make the number of men x, and then the number of women will be the total minus x or 
I could make the number of women x, and then the number of men would be the total minus x. So you could have had either of these, x for the number of men and 72 minus x for the number of women, or 72 minus x for the number of men and x for the number of women. Now the next one is an interesting one. John is half the age of his father. Now there are two ways that you could do this, and I always recommend any time you've got something where you have a fraction involved. So if they say one person is half the age of the other, or one value is is a fraction of the other, or the other way around, it can go one value is a multiple of the other. So one is double the other, or one is three times the other, or one is four times the other, or something like that. Then I always recommend making the smaller value x, because if you make the bigger value x, you're going to have to work with fractions. But if you make the smaller value x, then you won't have to work with fractions. So I'll show you both, and you can see what I mean. So John is half the age of his father, so John is the one who is a smaller age. So I'm going to make John's age x. Now if John is half the age of his father, how do we get from John's age to his father's age? We need to double it. We need to multiply by 2. We need to do the opposite of halving, which is multiplying by 2. So that will be 2x. Okay, so you can see over here I don't have any fractions. But if I made the father's age x, then John's age would be half of that, which is x over 2, or half x. It doesn't matter which way around you do it. So I could say half x, or I could say x over 2. Okay, so either of those is valid. They mean the same thing. Half x is the same as x over 2. However, they both have fractions, which we don't want to have to work with if we can avoid it. So this is the way that I would always recommend doing it. When you've got something where you've got a fraction or a potential fraction, where you're told one value is a fraction of the other or one value is a multiple of the other, I always recommend making the smaller value x so that the larger value will be something in terms of x and then you won't have to worry about fractions. Okay, so that is number two. Then number three, we have got the farmer has 153 sheep, male and female. Okay, so first, again, this one is one with totals. There are 153 sheep all together, so that is the total number. So if we make the number of males x, the number of females will be 153 minus x. It's the total minus the number of males. Or I could make the number of females x, in which case the number of males would be 153 minus x. Okay, so that is what you should have got for those three examples over there. Now you're going to do three more. And again, I'm going to give you one minute to express all of these in terms of x. Okay, so let's see how you did with those. So in question four, we had a girl's age five years ago. So there are two ways again of doing this. I can either make the girl's age now x, in which case the girl's age five years ago, to work out how old a girl would have been five years ago, we take her age now and we subtract five. So we're gonna say x minus five, okay? But that depends on if you are being asked to work out 
the girl's age now or if you're being asked to work out the girl's age five years ago. Maybe you're being asked to work the girl's age now, which means you would want to make that value X. But if you're being asked to work out how old she was five years ago, then you should make that value X. Whatever you're being asked to work out is what you should make X, except for when you have a multiple or fraction example like what I was saying on the previous slide. Okay, so if you're being asked to work out her age five years ago, then I would say make that X and then if you know how old somebody was five years ago, how do you work out how old they are now? You add five. So it's going to be X plus five. Okay. So again, it depends on what you're being asked to work out, which way around you would do that. And then this one is very similar. A boy's age in seven years time. Same thing again. If you're being asked to work out the boy's age now, you make his age now X and then you work out, you make his age in seven years time in terms of X. So that would be X plus seven. If I want to know how old somebody will be in ten in seven years, I must add seven to their age now. However, if you are being asked to work out how old the boy was seven years ago, make that X and then his age now would be X minus seven. Okay. Then over here, we've got a woman is three times as old as her daughter. So now this one is similar to number two that we had on the previous slide. Well, here we've got a multiple. We're being told one value is three times as much as the other value. It's a multiple of the other value. So remember, this is the only time I say, don't make whatever you're being asked to work out X, make the smaller value X, regardless of whether you're being asked to work that value out or not, because it'll help you to avoid fractions, which means you'll be less likely to make mistakes while you're sol uh, solving your equation. And then you can work out the relevant value afterwards once you know an actual value to work with. Okay, so over here, in this case, the woman is three times as old as her daughter. So obviously the daughter is younger. So I'm going to make the daughter's age X. Okay. And that means that the woman, we actually are told, is three times as old as that. So we're going to take the daughter's age and multiply by three. The other way of doing it, if you did do it the other way, is to make the woman's age X. But then, in order to work out how old the daughter is, if the woman is three times as old, then we have to do the opposite. We have to divide by three to get the daughter's age. So this would be X over three or a third X or X divided by three. You can write it any of those different ways. Okay. So this could have been written as a fraction as well, X over three, but no matter how you do it, that is what you're going to end up doing. And it's going to be working then with a fraction, which is better to avoid if you can. So I recommend using this version. And then the last ones that you're going to be doing, questions seven, eight, and nine. Once again, I'm going to give you one minute to express all of these in terms of X. Okay, so let's see how you did with that, with these examples. So in question seven, we have the difference between two numbers is 10. Now this one is very similar to the example where we have, where we're told that one is so much bigger than another, or one is um, younger than another or older than another. Those are all examples of differences. A difference between two numbers is what you get when you subtract the two numbers from each other, one number from the other one. Okay, but it's the same as saying how much bigger is the one number than the other number. In this case, the bigger number is 10 more than the smaller number. Okay, that's what the difference is telling us over there. They're telling us that the bigger number is 10 more than the smaller number. So what we need to do is we need to express that in terms of X. So I can make either one 
x. So if you are wanting to work out what the bigger number is, make that one x. And then write the other one in terms of x. Now, if you have the bigger number and you know that it is 10 more than the smaller number, because the difference between them is 10, then to work out the smaller number, you're going to take the bigger number and you're going to subtract 10. Okay, however, if you are wanting to work out the smaller number, then you make that one x. And then if you know that the bigger number is 10 more than the smaller number, how are you going to get from the smaller number to the bigger number? You need to take the smaller number and you need to add 10 to get to the bigger number. So it's going to be x plus 10. So that's what you should get for that one over there. Then this one, we've got a girl is five years younger than her brother. Okay, so first the girl's age. If I want to work out the girl's age, I'll make that x. And then I need to go to the brother's age and I say, well, if the girl is five years younger, then that means the brother is older. So I'm going to take the girl's age and I'm going to add five years to it to get the brother's age. However, if I wanted to work out the brother's age, I would make his age x, and then I can work out the girl's age by saying if she's five years younger, I can take his age and I can take away the five years. So it's going to be x minus five. So those are the two options you have for that example. So either one of those you could have used when you were doing it. And then the last one, the sum of two numbers is 56. Once again, this is one where you've got a total. The sum is the total from adding up those two numbers. So I am going to make one of these x. And then the other one is going to be the total, which is 56 minus x. Or I could make number 2x, in which case number 1 will be also the total minus x. So when you have a total and two values, then it's the same either way around. But when you have a difference like this, where one is more than the other one, and you're told what the difference is between them, then you're going to have either a plus or a minus that you're going to have to work with, depending on which one you choose to make x. Okay. So let's just do a quick recap. So when we are asked to solve a word problem, you're going to need to express your values that you have, your unknown values in terms of x. Make one of them x and make any others in terms of x in the way that we've been doing over here. I always recommend making the one that you are looking for, that you're trying to work out, x. And the only exception to that is if there is an example where you've got fractions or where you've got a multiple, so where one is a fraction of the other or where one is a multiple of the other, then make the smaller one x so that you can avoid having to work with fractions. So that is what that is how you're going to express your things in terms of x, your values in terms of x, those unknowns. And then that is what we're going to be using when we are solving word problems in the next lesson. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.